it's generally known that exercise is good for you and is going to reduce your risk of dying. However, it's often observed that people who exercise a lot have much higher amounts of arterial plaque than people who don't exercise. That's kind of a paradox. Exercise is found to make you live longer while at the same time increasing coronary artery calcification, which increases the risk of dying to heart disease. In this video, I'm going to go through the research about this phenomenon and I'm going to outline you the workout plan that currently is associated with the lowest risk of dying. Let's start with the study is finding long-term exercise and increased risk of coronary artery calcification. These people have otherwise no other risk factors related to atherosclerosis such as diabetes or hypertension, yet they still show plaque in their arteries. Endurance athletes especially are seen to experience this phenomenon. There are many reasons why this is thought to be so. Too much exercise or chronic stress from exercise may increase inflammation and arterial stiffness that then mediates this increased risk of plaque. Having higher blood pressure as well from overtraining could also increase this risk. But it's important to realize there are different types of plaque and not all of it is the same. Coronary artery calcification or the calcium buildup in the arteries is one of the final stages of atherosclerosis progression. The calcium accumulates there as a result of lesions in the endothelium as the body tries to seal the damage. You can think of it almost like a cement that is there to fill a pothole. The only difference is that the cement is there to just repair the damage. But if it accumulates too much, then it's going to impair blood flow and that increases the risk of a heart attack or a stroke. Coronary artery calcification is measured with a CT scan and is graded as the Agatstone score, ranging from zero to several thousand. The higher the score, the more calcium has accumulated in the arteries and the narrower they've become. However, the CT scan doesn't detect what's called soft plaque, which is actually more dangerous because it's more volatile, whereas calcified plaque is more stable. When hard calcified plaque consists of mostly calcium and collagen, then the soft plaque is made of cholesterol, ester and lipid containing macrophages. When a soft plaque ruptures, it can cause a blood clot, which leads to thrombosis or a stroke and almost an immediate death. The hard calcified plaque is much less likely to rupture and it stabilizes the plaque. You can't detect soft plaque with a CT scan because the CT scan only looks at calcium at a certain amount. Even very small amounts of calcium might not be detected. To measure soft plaque, you need to do a CT angiogram. The problem is that the CT angiogram also involves more radiation and it's more invasive. That's why it's not recommended to do for regular people unless they are suspected to be at a higher risk of heart disease or with already existing heart disease. It's been found that athletes often have only calcified stable plaques instead of the soft unstable ones which is a safer composition. This is also the reason why athletes have a lower risk of mortality compared to the general population, despite the presence of coronary artery plaque. This means that exercise is so powerful that even though you see increased coronary artery calcification, your risk of dying to heart disease is still lower than the general population. So exercise can progress the disease in terms of the increased plaque, but the risk of dying to the disease is still lower, which is just mind-boggling. It definitely means you shouldn't exercise because you're afraid of causing calcification or that you should stop exercising after you find out that you have a high CAC score. That's because number one, not every person who exercises gets calcium accumulation. Number two, the plaque is safer and more stable. And number three, people who exercise still have a lower risk of heart disease death, even if they have coronary artery calcification. So how much exercise is optimal for reducing the risk of coronary artery calcification and the risk of dying to heart disease. One thing is clear, having higher cardiorespiratory fitness and a higher VO2 max is associated with a lower risk of mortality and heart disease events across all levels of calcification. This means that if you have higher calcium, your risk of heart disease is still lower if you have a higher VO2 max. It also looks like that exercising more reduces your risk of mortality, even if you have high calcium. A 2019 study on over 21,000 men in their 50s found that those who had a calcium score of over 100, indicating moderate atherosclerosis, didn't see an increased risk in all-cause mortality over 10 years when they exercised for over 3,000 met minutes per week. However, men with a calcium score of over 100, but they exercised for 1,500 met minutes per week, were twice as likely to die of cardiovascular disease than those with a calcium score of less than 100. Men with a calcium score of less than 100, but with 3,000 met minutes per week of exercise, were half as likely to die than men with 1,500 met minutes per week of exercise and with a calcium score of below 100. So it means that higher amounts of physical activity in the presence of already existing calcium plaque is still better for reducing the risk of heart disease events and mortality compared to lower amounts of exercise. And it means that if you have higher calcium levels, then it looks like exercising more will reduce your risk. So you want to aim for at least 3000 minutes per week of exercise. So how do you reach those 3000 minutes? 
METs refer to metabolic equivalents, and it's a measurement used to assess the ratio between your working and resting metabolic rates. When you're sitting, you spend 1 MET per minute. Walking at 3 to 5 kilometers per hour, or 1.8 to 3.1 miles per hour, is 2 to 3 METs per minute. Running at 13 kilometers per hour, or 8 miles per hour, is 13 METs per minute. If you run at a speed of 10 kilometers per hour, which is 6.2 miles per hour for one hour, then you are expending 588 met minutes. Weightlifting for one hour is the equivalent of 270 met minutes. To get the 3000 met minutes per week, here's what you could do. Go for a brisk walk for an hour every day and you're already getting 1500 met minutes per week. If you have three weightlifting workouts per week for an hour, then you're getting an extra 750 met minutes. If if you do zone 2 cardio for 60 minutes at a speed of about 13 kilometers per hour, then you're getting 500 met minutes. If you do that twice a week, it's 1000 met minutes. And if you do it three times per week, then you're getting 1500 met minutes per week. So as you can see, it's not very hard to reach 3000 met minutes per week of exercise. And you should try to aim for the 3000 met minutes per week, no matter your health condition. It doesn't matter if you have coronary artery calcification or not. People who exercise for 3000 met minutes per week have a lower risk of heart disease and mortality, regardless if they have atherosclerosis. And people who have atherosclerosis will significantly reduce the risk of future heart disease events if they exercise for 3000 met minutes per week. So here's a plan to achieve that. Go for a brisk walk every day for at least an hour, lift weights or do calisthenics for an hour three times a week, and do zone two cardio at least twice a week for 60 minutes. Another critical component here is to discuss the intensity of exercise. When it comes to exercise and calcium buildup, then a 2023 study on middle-aged and older adults found that exercise intensity, but not volume, was associated with the progression of coronary atherosclerosis. Very vigorous and high intensity exercise appears to be more responsible for plaque progression than just low intensity or vigorous exercise. This coincides with the 2023 meta-analysis by O'Keefe and colleagues, which show that the benefits of vigorous exercise and cardiovascular disease mortality were maximized at 150 to 200 minutes per week providing 15% reduction. And beyond that, you started to see a reduction in benefits and increased risk. With moderate physical activity, you continue to see benefits on cardiovascular disease mortality all the way until 900 minutes per week, providing 40% risk reduction. When it comes to all-cause mortality, then they found that moderate physical activity at 900 minutes per week was also linked to a lower risk than vigorous intensity exercise. So it looks like you get more benefits by doing more moderate physical activity rather than doing more more vigorous intensity exercise. The benefits of vigorous exercise plateau at about 150 to 200 minutes per week for heart disease mortality. Whereas the more moderate physical activity you do, the lower your risk of dying and the lower your risk of heart disease is. Too much high intensity exercise appears to promote more coronary artery calcification because of the higher amounts of physical stress and inflammation. For me, this makes perfect sense and I have adjusted my workout plan as well based on this evidence. Right now, I'm doing resistance training three times a week for a total of about 150 minutes. And I might also do one high intensity interval training session for 20 to 30 minutes. That totals me at less than 200 minutes of vigorous intensity exercise per week, which is optimal for heart disease risk reduction. However, I'm doing zone two cardio three times a week for 60 minutes, and I'm doing brisk walking every day for about one hour as well. So in total, I'm getting almost 800 minutes of moderate intensity physical activity per week, which is also optimal for all cores and heart disease mortality. And this workout plan also puts me over 3000 met minutes per week very easily, which is the lowest risk. To sum it up, too much high intensity exercise and vigorous exercise appears to increase the risk of coronary artery calcification, and it might be associated with a higher risk of heart disease mortality as well. This applies especially to prolonged vigorous exercise like marathon running, ultra endurance or Ironman, if you do it for many decades. It's important to realize that this phenomenon is found in middle aged and older adults who have already been exercising like this for decades, because calcium buildup also takes decades. However, despite the increased calcium buildup in these people, they still have a lower risk of dying and a lower risk of heart disease, because exercise is just so powerful. And someone who doesn't exercise, they have no plaque buildup, actually has a higher risk of dying because they don't exercise. Calcium buildup without exercising, specifically exercising less than 1500 met minutes per week, is linked to a significantly higher risk of heart disease events, whereas exercising over 3000 met minutes per week is linked to a lower risk of heart disease events, even if you have a calcium score of over 100. So the takeaway is that you should want to exercise for at least 3000 met minutes per week. 
and the workout plan that I outlined in this video achieves that. If you want to know about the optimal way to exercise for longevity and understand over 50 biomarkers related to longevity, then check out my new book, The Longevity Leap. You can pre-order the book at thelongevityleap.com or check out the link in the description. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.